Hey folks, Marty here at Pack Racing Springs uh, with a much needed uh, valve train uh, session. How's that? Uh, we get calls every day, lots of calls on our tech line. We're one of the few companies that offers a tech line to help you pick the right spring for what you're doing. Uh, when you call in, there's a lot of things that we need to know to be able to help you pick the right spring so that you don't have a failure because failures lead to mad people and broken engines. So uh, first thing we need to know is basic question, how much lift? A lot of people talk about lift, well I got this lobe and this rocker. It's not what we need to know. I need to know that with your cam and your engine with a rocker arm on it, preferably with some spring force, how much does this valve move down at full lift after lash? Don't care how much lash you're running, I need to know how much that valve's moving. That will help me determine what spring you need. Uh, I also need to know what you have for installed height. You know, your height from the, from the locator, if I can pick it up, from the locator to the underside land of the retainer, okay? That tells me what package we're working with, how much room you have. I need to know what size spring cup you have. A lot of the LS stuff, 1-300, it's small. Our good friends at Airflow Research, let us use this head here. Their stuff will, expect, will uh, accept our big springs, big triples. Uh, we got our standard dual 1355, the spring that started it all. Um, so you can put any spring you want on this particular head. Uh, we're going to use it as a setup example. First thing we're going to ask you after we figure out what you have for lift at the valve is what's your intended use for this? You run around on the street with your blowing big block picking up cheeseburgers, you go into the drag strip, or are you running this thing in a drift car? How many RPM are you running it? Are you running it on a road course? Um, you know, a lot of people can say, well, I run 6,000. Okay, well, if you run 6,000 all day long, you need a different spring than a spring you would have in your Corvette that you'd hit 6,000 at the shifts. Uh, you know, circle track endurance is a whole nother issue. Uh, you've got, uh, nothing can hurt a spring worse than time at temperature. Oil, how much oil you got on the spring? What are you using in the valve cover for oil or in your circle track engine? Uh, drag racing, quarter miles, completely different than an eighth mile. Hardest part of the uh, run in a quarter mile car is second eighth mile. Eighth mile guys, they're fast, they're fun, they're done in an eighth mile right when that thing's in and high gear and starting to really do work. They don't go through valve springs as fast as quarter mile cars. Uh, we're going to use our 1325 old reliable dual, no damper. This will be the spring that will actually be going on this set of heads. A lot of things to look at when you're when you're considering springs. Uh, you've got what kind of retainer you're going to use. That all comes down to what kind of usage as well. Got our standard chromoly. We have two different grades of titanium, and we have tool steel. Tool steel is the hardest, it's expensive, it won't wear. Strongly recommended when you're running a valve spring with a damper. The damper, as everyone knows, is a very thin wire. It's like a little beaver chewing on that retainer. It will eat through titanium retainers. Then you have titanium in your engine and eventually you have a failure. Don't want to use that. Talk about installed height. People ask all the time, well, I don't know how to check my installed height. Man, we got all these handy little micrometers. They work great. Got to have your locator. Locator has to fit the spring. You do not want this spring bouncing around in this pocket. Failure, failure, failure. Look, or the retainer needs to fit as well. Needs to fit the inner diameter, outer diameter. Calls all the time. People want to try to use their existing components. So now we're limited in what spring we can sell you because you don't want to buy a set of retainers and locators and I understand that. Okay, so fit is very, very, very important. You do not want this spring moving around. So to check our installed height, we got to have our locator on there with no shim. This happens to be a 30 thousandths, mostly they're 60 thousandths. It's got to fit the guide diameter. All your aftermarket heads, 565, factory big block stuff, 630. Some of the LS stuff, most of it actually is 500. So that's important. You don't want this dancing around on the guide. So we're going to do this. We're going to take our retainer, our steel locks, slide them in the groove, slide the valve out so we can get them in there. I'm going to run this up. And our beautiful height mic is going to tell us that we're dealing with 
right at a two inch and five installed height. Okay, now I know what I got to work with. Uh, one thing you wanna make sure of when you're doing this, that you got the right locks, okay? This thing isn't rocking, it isn't moving around. You can't turn the retainer, well, it just came loose, but you can't turn the valve inside the locks. If you can do that, you've got the wrong lock. The diameter here is critical to the diameter there. If that lock is not colliding that valve, it will shear those tangs off. Catastrophic failure. Don't do that. Height mic can't get away without it if you're doing a lot of cylinder heads. If you're out in your garage, borrow one from your buddy, borrow one from your local machine shop. Gotta have an accurate height measurement so that you can set your coil bind clearance to get the spring installed properly. A lot of guys will call up, don't have any idea what it is, put their springs in, man, thing broke after three miles. It's because you were, you were binding the spring. And when a spring is in full bind constantly, it's gonna break, period. So this spring right here, coil bind. Coil bind is critical. When you're checking coil bind of a beehive, we use our coil bind height checker here. It's very easy. Don't need a retainer or anything. Just put the spring in there. You run this baby down, this spring binds at one inch, 143. Well, I can't do that with this dual spring because my retainer has a step on it. And the step typically measures around 100,000. So what I suggest you do is you take your calipers, you measure. This particular one, sitting right at 95 thousandths. So what I'm gonna do to check my bind height on this spring, so I'm gonna bring mine down, I've zeroed out, I'm gonna bring it up 95 thousandths, and I'm gonna zero it again. So now, put my retainer in my spring, run this spring down, this particular spring binds at one inch and 60 thousandths, okay? That's very, very, very important. Everybody is not gonna have a pack racing solid height checker. So the alternative to that is a bench vise with soft jaws, not the big serrated steel ones that are gonna chew up a retainer. Same thing, gotta subtract that thickness of the lid. And then once you put this in your vise and you compress this to solid, you'll know when it's solid. Measure between the jaws, that will give you your install, your solid height on that spring. So. What I wanna do when I'm setting my valve springs up is I wanna run them a certain distance from bind. We recommend for racing applications on a dual with no damper and most beehives between 60 and 80 thousandths. So the real simple thing to do is to take that one inch and 60 that we just measured, add, let's say we'll add 80. So now we're at uh, one inch, 140. Okay, so that's gonna be our open number. So now we want to know what kind of load we have. We got a solid cam, we got 700 lift. We want, let's just say we want 700 pounds over the nose. So all I got to do now when I'm trying to select a spring is go to my catalog, which has all my spring charts, knowing that I'm at one inch 140 on this spring. So look at one inch 150 across here and find the load that I'm looking for. That's gonna help me find a spring. And then all I do is back up my lift, which will bring me to my installed height. Say it's 700,000, so one inch 150. One inch 850 is gonna be my installed height. Find a corresponding load. You can find the spring that you need to do the job you're looking for. It's the same on anything. It doesn't matter if it's a four valve, a, a two valve, a, a big chief, a pro stock engine, an LS street engine, it's all the same. That is how you determine what spring you need. You need to know what you got to work with here. You need to know what load you want. If it's a hydraulic roller, it takes a lot less. Lifter comes into play. You're running a hydraulic roller with a stock GM LS lifter. You can only put so much spring load in it before it collapses the, the, the pedal valve in the lifter. So if you've got an aftermarket lifter, you can run more spring load. Um, that, that brings you into how much open load you can run as well. It all applies when you're talking about hydraulic lifter stuff. You're running a flat tappet cam, everybody knows. You can't run a lot of seat pressure on a flat tappet cam. Or you're gonna knock the load right off the camshaft. Solid roller stuff, depending on the quality of your parts, you can get away with a lot of pressure. Depends on how much lift you're running. 
you start running over 800 lift, we suggest going to our 1300 series springs. 1300 series spring has a noticeable difference from a 1200 series. 1225 versus a 1325, same outer spring, same inner spring, more processing. The outer processing on the spring makes it more durable. It will allow it to handle more abuse. So anytime a guy's running 800, 850 lift and they call up and say, hey, should I buy the 1200 or the 1300 series? We're always gonna recommend the 1300 series. It's a way to go. Uh, we have a full line of components for all of our springs. We have steel locks, we have titanium locks. We can provide you with a package that will fit what you need, but we need information. You can't have too much information. One other thing I wanna touch on and I'll let you go is when you are checking your springs, I get guys call me up all the time and say, man, you know, the spec in the book says that it's this much pressure here. If you do not calibrate your, your spring tester to allow for that step, you will never get the load that you're supposed to get. If you just put the spring in like this and run it down to two inch, this thing's got 280 pounds. So if I back that up, my 95 thousandths for my retainer, so I'm gonna come up 95 and zero it. Now I'll run it down to two inch. Proper way to do it. It's just about 300 pounds. It makes a big difference. That's when you'll see low loads, so always be aware of that. Um, last but not least, install height. Guys think going back to uh, solid height, they, they get in the book and they'll read, oh, it says I got to install it at two, three hundred. All this is a reference. Everything on here is a reference. Distance to coil bind, plus coil bind clearance, plus lift at the valve will get you in the, where you need to be with your valve spring.